Hi there. Today I'm going to start warnish the mast. Last time uh, you saw me prepare for uh, warnishing with uh, sanding the surface with 120 grit paper. Uh, now I have also vacuum cleaned the garage and uh, put cover on the floor and so on. So I'm ready to start uh, warnishing this mast. I will use a two component polyurethane warnish. One part of hardener is poured. The hardener sticks to the lid, so I take care to remove the spillage from the edge. Otherwise it will not be easy or even possible to open the lid. The base is not that problematic. Four parts are poured. Mixing is easy as this is not so viscous as epoxy is. I use a marked stick to get the proportions right. It's beneficial to let the mixed varnish stand for up to 30 minutes before usage. It floats less and it's easier to get a flat coverage if it has started to polymerize. As this is the first cover, I prioritize high penetration and start right on. The sail will slip easier on a varnish surface than on epoxy. Thus, I put some varnish in the rope channel. As I wipe the lid, it's still possible to open the can for the second coat. And no problem opening the base. To get a more even result, I varnish one side at a time. And turn the mast as I go. I also use a varnish that has started to polymerize. After two full coats, it's time for the first intermediate sanding. I sand using a 240 grit paper as I have some left over. Although 180 grit is the recommended coarseness for this step. When I'm done, I move inside again and leave the dust behind. Any dust may end up in the varnish, so it's best to have separate places for sanding and varnishing. I also remove dust using a sticky cloth. The third coat goes on at the 17 degrees Celsius, optimal for varnishing. Balancing evaporation of the solvent and polymerization of the components. After one more coat, it's time for the second sanding. Sanding with 180 grit paper to get sticking structure for the following coat and still get as smooth as possible surface. Any curtains from applying too much varnish are carefully removed. I will only apply five coats this time, so I want the surface to be flat for the final coat. Vacuuming off most of the dust outside before moving inside for the final layer. Sticky cloth removes most of any dust left. The final layer is applied and I rotate the mast as each side gets a coat. As this is the final coat, I use less varnish in the pencil with larger strokes to avoid curtains and unevenness. Last step is to attach cleats. A small drilled hole to screw into. This one will be used for the halyard. The areas where the mast rested on are varnished. Let's see what the mast weighs. So I take this old piece first. I'm 
92.7 including my weight. And then we compare it with this new one. The new top part. 90.7. So it's lighter. Of course it's shorter so it should be lighter. And then the old lower part. Hundred <laughs> and the new lower part. Ninety six point seven. So it's definitely lighter. Now I'm eager to test the new mask. It's a cold spring day with some fresh snow on the ground. Transporting the mast on the roof rack is a big design parameter. I wanted a light lower part that do not stick out more than 50 cm behind the car. The boom is short enough to fit inside, together with the shorter top mass part. The roof rack is legal for 100 kg. With the lighter mast I am well below, although the hulls are about 35 kg each. and demand a tight bonding for safe transportation. In the next episode it will be some test sailing. Why not subscribe to make sure that you do not miss that one.